and welcome back to MD Globe Muscle here at the On The Rise Media Studio with me, your host, Giles Thomas. And guys, he is back by popular demand. Zach Khan is sort of in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, guys. I'm here. Zach, Zach, it's, uh, it's been too long, mate. I've got to be honest. <laughs> You, you know you know what I'm like. I fucking hate podcasts, but you know what I mean. Here I am. I'm doing my bit for society. You know what I mean. I'm gonna try to get you banned. So let's. Do it. <laughs> I said. I said. This is the. We gotta try. This is the. Uh, we've gotta get cancelled episode. But let's be. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go easy. Let's we'll start easy. <laughs> Zach. Zach. Don't worry, I'll go easy on you. Good. Thank you. Sure. Uh, go on. Zach. Um. How have you been, mate? What's What's going on in the world of Zach Carnum? Everything's going good, Jazz. Like I said to you, you know, like I said, main thing is, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a social media guy. You know, what I mean, I'm doing my bit for chemical warfare. You know, what I mean, you know, they're allowing me to travel and do my bit. You know, what I mean, it's a good company. They got great products. You know, very, you know, thought out products. You know, what I mean, mm. they got everything for everything you need. You know, and uh, it's, you know, they're not being. Uh, a lot of people don't know about them, you know what I mean? They do in the UK, but they're going to be going to the US soon. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, in the US, you know, I'll be there promoting it with them to help them get it out there more. Obviously, you know, I'm a bit more known in the States, and I've got a bit more better following from the States than I do in the UK. You know, the UK is a strange place, Giles. You know, it's strange. I don't understand it, why uh, bodybuilders... You know, don't support each other as much as they should, and uh, they're just like so easy to put each other down. Listen, we all have to work hard. You know what I mean? And you know, when people say, "Oh, you have to out train the next person," listen, <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. It's not like it's not like a boxing match. You know, you gotta out train somebody. Listen. You can only train as hard as your body allows you to train mm. and vice versa for everybody else. So, you know, none of them semantics go together. They don't make sense. You know, too many too many bodybuilders talk like they're fucking boxers. <laughs> we ain't boxers. We ain't boxers. Let's be honest there. Eh? Fucking a nine stone, ten stone, fucking MMA fighter will fucking choke us out. No problem. And we'll be huffing and puffing and blowing our fucking balls and ass out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, you know, let's be honest, you know what I mean? We're fucking bodybuilders. We get on a stage in a pair of fucking trunks and showing the world how big our muscles are just because our muscles are massive. We train a certain way. We don't train for speed. We don't train to get choked out. We don't train grappling. We don't train jujitsu. We don't train boxing. We don't train wrestling. We don't train for that. Don't get me wrong. And, you know, any bodybuilder, what's good in bodybuilding will most likely be good in any other sport as well. You know what I mean? Mm. And, you know, obviously it's good. It's good to be doing other sports as well. You know, like, obviously, it's just no point just being one dimension. You know what I mean? Mm. And like I was saying, it's like, it's so funny, like, you know, the UK vibe with bodybuilding and people who are mainly pros and stuff like that. You don't see that camaraderie you know what i mean see everything you know you don't see that uh, i don't know whether it's because we haven't got a media what brings british bodybuilding together more you know what i mean i don't know apart from you interviewing us all and you know asking about what's going on i don't think there's any other outlet what brings a uh, British bodybuilding together. Do you do you think it's because I mean I think someone I I saw someone did a count up and it was something like between twenty five and thirty different federations in the UK and we're only a small island you know with like what seventy million people. Do you think it's because like in America it's probably like ninety ninety five percent dominated by the NPC and Pro League, and then you got five percent ten percent maybe at the most from other feds. Do you think it's do you think it's because of that in the UK? I think, you know, what you've got is, it's like it's strange, it's because you're either this federation, and if you're not that federation, then you're against all the other federation. Yeah. And if you're, with, if you're with that federation, then you're against all the other federation, and they all talk shit about each other. You know what I mean? Instead of like, listen, 
it's, it makes me laugh like, you know, when you, you see some bodybuilders and they, you know, in the fitness industry, girls or guys, and they talk about, oh, I entered this federation, I didn't get placed, and then I went to another federation and I got placed and I won. And, you know, that just shows you that, you know, they were looking, they, they weren't look, giving me the proper look, what I need to, like, come off it. It's, <laughs> come off it. You, you entered... You entered a fucking hard show and you didn't get placed and then you entered a Mickey Mouse show and you won it. Mm. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, the thing about it is, let's be honest, you know, what level what level you're at, you know what I mean? End of the day, I always say, listen, you have to get the knockbacks. And, you know, and it says, it says a lot about a person's character. Getting them knockbacks and keep coming back, keep coming back. You know, when... When I was competing, yeah. we only had like we only had three main federations: NABA and uh, you know, what's it, UKBFF, and uh, what was the other one now? Well, you, had, um, you had the natural federations, and then you had the other little ones, the independents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the two had, main ones, wasn't it? The two. You had the NABA, you had the NABA and UKBFF going at it hard. Yeah. it's like a lot of pe- a lot of people would be entering. You know, you, it was more like a dense pool of good athletes you know what i mean yeah. so it's so it's like if you was if you was good in the NABA and you came over to the ukbff and you did well in that then you knew where you stand and vice versa you know what i mean well, i mean what about and, that year you won the british 2009 there was alvin small stuart core you know dean mcturnan i mean the, the super heavyweights i mean the stage was creaking mate <laughs> That's yeah, and, and and even you had the, the other classes with uh, Pat Warner, yeah, and uh, Tavernia, uh, Tavernia, Sean, Sean, Sean Tavernia, yeah, yeah, little little fucking pocket rocket, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Talk about talk about mass monster with shape and small waist for that size, mm. unbelievable physique, you know what I mean? It's crazy, yeah, because he got the rookie of the year at the two thousand and forget what year it was, one of the Olympias, and then he kind of was done. With, yeah. the pro, with the pros, the yeah. Olympia. So like, uh, I, I just see like you know, it's it's it's, 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 it's we're living in a crazy time, Giles. It's like if people aren't fighting over federations, they're fighting over you know different things. You know what I mean? It's like if, if it's it's about politics. If it's not about politics, it's about religion. If it's not about religion, it's about being circumcised and uncircumcised. What's better? Who fucking knows? You know what I mean? It's always it's always something. You know what people, the media, is putting out there mm. to keep you busy, to keep you busy, and keep you arguing about something. But when really, when it comes to reality, I always said to people, if you want to know what's going on in the world, whether you hate. You know when you see on media and they show you blacks and whites and this going on, race wars going on. So I said, listen, just walk out your house and look at your neighbours and that is your life. And that's what you've got to ask yourself. Do I get on with these people? And you know, and most of you will turn out and around to yourself and say, yeah, I do get on with these people. What they're showing me in the media, I don't see that. I haven't experienced that. And most of you will not have experienced it. And if you had ex- have experienced it, which is unfortunate, then you know you have a reason to feel better. But you can't basically just put one experience down to a whole nation and a whole type of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because stuff because that's wrong. You know what I mean? And that's what we're seeing at this moment of time. You know, like it's good against evil. So if something is good, that means. They cannot do no evil. And if something is considered evil, the type of people are considered evil, they can do no good. Mm. Life's, the, life's not a Hollywood film, is it? There's no goodies and baddies, really, is there? No, like, no, that's the problem. That's what people need white. to realise. Yeah. Like the media is very good, and a lot of people are realising the mainstream media is the biggest problem because you can't trust what they put out there, and people need to realise that, you know? And it's the same way... Now there's a lot of independent reporters who are putting out information out there, you know, through social media. Social media has got good things if you follow the good account, but it's got a lot of shit as well. But you have to filter through that shit, mm. you know what I mean, to get to the goodness. But a lot of people, 90%, 95% or 99% of the people don't see the good shit. 
<laughs> because because it's all bombarded with bullshit. It's like the fitness industry. You see you see all the girls there dressed hardly, you know, nothing with titties and asses, fake titties, fake asses, jiggling about, and they're all doing these exercises eh, in a certain way, and they're promoted by big companies, getting good money, all for the real athletes, eh, the real females out there who are training hard, doing fucking heavy weights, and these fucking girls with big titties just doing lap pull down, and a camera angle is at her ass, not, nothing to do with her back, mm -hmm. and she's getting she's getting a hundred fucking people saying, oh, you look beautiful, I'll die for you, I'll marry you, and all these foreign people just simping over her, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and, and then she's, you know, basically, that type of image, what she's putting out there, Young girls think it's normal, but it isn't. But all she's doing is enticing people for them to come to her OnlyFans page to see the real deal. You know what I'm saying? Mm. To see the black hole. And we're not even talking about space here. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Notice Lawrence took the mic off because she didn't want to be laughing the whole time. So, uh... <laughs> so mate, I'm, I mean, obviously, let's let's go back to basics. How's, how's training going? And also, I was surprised. I've got to say, I've got to put it out there. I was surprised to not see you throw your hat into the ring for the Masters Olympia, mate, even though I know you're still only 28. Yeah, yeah. No, so, Giles, you know what? Training is going well at the moment. Good, and, you know, and, and as, as you know, like life takes over. You yeah. have to put, prioritize your life. And a lot of people, what they don't realize in this business is bodybuilding, unless you're at the top, it doesn't earn you money and you have to work hard to earn that money. So at the end of the day, to put your life on hold for a show uh, where you're just doing it for yourself, uh, mm -hmm. it has to be for yourself, not for the money, because you're not going to get no money from uh, the show. It's the title, you know, yeah. what, I, what I want, you know what I mean? And give it a, a good shot on a level playing field. And, you know, like, because the thing about it, I told you, I had a couple of niggles and stuff like that and work commitments. And I've been busy, you know what I mean, with that. And uh, and obviously with Chemical Warfare doing uh, a lot of stuff for them with their, you know, with their filming vlogs and stuff like that. I've just been busy. Good. And, and as you know, like, you, as you know, you have to be in the right frame. You have to be up to a certain level. For me, I had to be at a certain level before I started dieting before I started pushing my body towards mm -hmm. that. And I, and I wasn't there, and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to waste my time. So what I'll do this year is I will check out what it was like, you know, what the, what type of com competitors entering. And I, and I saw that, and it, it was a very good standard. It was a better standard than I thought. And, you know, come out, it looked great. You it looked know good, I mean? didn't it? It looked good. It looked good. Yeah, it looked great. But, you know, the thing about it is, it's like, come out, he's still competitive in the 212. Yeah. But but rest of the guys are not competitive in the two you know open Olympia two twelve which was a little unfair because if you're still coming like second and third in the two twelve Olympia or something. Sorry guys, just had a bit of a connection issue there, so we rang Zach back. So you were saying uh, the last I heard was you were saying about um, Kamal. Yeah, I said you know yeah Kamal was a favorite to win going in anyway because you know he's the most competitive out of all the pros who was competing at the time you know mm -hmm. like i said to you which is fine but i think there should be a rule for the olympia meaning that if you're a masters it should mean that number one you're not competitive in the other olympias obviously which makes no sense for you to enter the master masters should be for the guys who are basically not competitive in the uh, main Olympia, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, oh, I see, and I see, sorry, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Because the thing is, each of the winners of the Masters Olympia qualified for the actual Olympia. Do you, you disagree with that? Say that again. The winners of the every category winner of the Masters Olympia qualified for the Mr. Olympia. Yeah, and which is unfair. Okay. Because it, it should be for the people who can't qualify for the Open Olympia. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Th that will make it better. Because if you if you can qualify for the Olympia, Open Olympia, the you know, 212 or the Open, or even the figure, fitness, physique, then obviously you're still competitive. Yeah. You know, it, it makes no sense. Because, you know, it should be for the people. Because obviously, 
you can enter the Open Olympia. So why why enter the Masters? Because obviously you're still competitive yet. Enter the Masters when you're not well, competitive. Well, you had Kamal last year who was third in the 212 and you had Jessica yeah. Reyes Padilla, the figure, who was the runner-up to Sydney Gillen at the Olympia last year and she won the Masters. And she, she's yeah. won multiple shows this year as well. Yeah, which I think is unfair because the guys who you saw who were second, third, fourth and fifth, there were people who haven't competed for a while. Okay. You know what I mean? And and some of them, like apart from uh, Max Charles or somebody, a few of them, uh, well, Phil, they, uh, I don't think, did he qualify for the Olympia? Uh, Max Charles hasn't, but Phil Clayhoe, who came third, had qualified. He won in Florida, in Orlando, earlier in the year. So he was already yeah. qualified for the Olympia. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it should be that, you know, listen, you know, Totally. If you can qualify for the uh, Mr. Olympia, the 212, you're competitive. Mm. You know, you're not ready for the Masters. Give the guys, you know, who are not competitive for the open classes against the young books and stuff like that. Give them that chance, you know, I mean, to do the Masters because obviously all of them are on 11 playing field. Yeah. And plus, if I can qualify for the Open Olympia, why would I want to enter the Masters at the moment? Because, you know, you don't... You, yeah, maybe maybe you might think to yourself, you know what, well, get that title under my belt while I can. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I understand I understand that side of it as well. But I just think that if you're still competitive, you should, you know, do the do the normal classes, you know what I mean? Well Kamal's got two different Olympia titles now. Yeah, exactly. So, mm. like I say, he's done it. I don't think he's entering the two twelve this year, is he? He's saying, no, uh, no, he's of... well he he was well he was when it in Libya after the Masters Olympia, and then obviously, because I messaged him, and um, obviously the floods, you know, the big floods in Libya? Yeah. And I, he didn't message me back, and he normally does. So I left it a few days, messaged him again, and then he said, uh, he says, oh, no, I'm fine. He said, that's a different part of Libya. He said, but my brother's got cancer, and I've been going back and forth to the hospital. He said, so I'm not going to be doing the Olympia this year, the Open. Well, well you know what, well, comes first, and you know, you know yourself, um, when you're in that diet mode, you know, when you've done it, or, you know, I've done it, you, life doesn't exist apart from bodybuilding mm -hmm. and dieting and food. It consumes you. You don't have time to do anything else. You're basically basically a robot. You know what I mean? You don't have time for other fun because, you know, the thing about it is you're giving so much 101% to do the show and you don't want to look back at it and say to yourself, oh, I fucked about my prep. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. When I mean, really... I don't think it would have made that much difference, but your mentality is that I don't want to look back on myself and say, you know what, if I didn't do that, I could have probably placed higher or I could have probably won if I came second. Mm. It's, that, it's that type of uh, frame of mind most of these guys have, you know, most of the champions have. Yeah. But, you know, then you've got guys who are genetic freaks eh, who can get away with a lot. And they like can go out every weekend and party. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, genetics plays a big part in, in, in this sport. You know what I mean. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like a, I love it when guys says like, "Oh, uh, hard work beats genetics." Trust me, <laughs> hard work, hard work. You know, only can beat genetics eh, when genetics isn't working. Yeah. And it doesn't have to work hard. You know what I mean? Mm. Typical example, and I always tell people, like, when I saw Paul Dillard train, and when I saw Flex Wheeler train, and, like, they weren't pushing big weights about, you know, I saw, I saw like, Flex, like, you know, you, you would just look half asleep and coming into the gym and just <laughs> moved away. Yeah. And, then, and then you saw Paul Dillard, like, do, like, 10-pound dumbbell curls with humongous 25-inch arms. Mm -hmm. You know? It, it looked ridiculous, you know? I remember in um, Flex Magazine, he was curling 40-pound dumbbells, and I was thinking, I was like 19, I was thinking, I curl 40-pound dumbbells? That means I'm going to get as big as Paul Delet. And funny enough, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, guys. We had a bit of sound issue there. So, sorry, Zach, you were saying? Um... <laughs> I was thinking, I hope he's remember what, I'm talk what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, mate. Hey, listen, I, I really, I, I, I want to talk about um, Nathan's return, Nathan Diash's return. What was your, what was yeah. your thoughts on that, mate? Yeah, Nathan, Nathan uh, to say that he came back from uh, bicep tear and looked the way he did was fucking amazing. But one thing you can count, two. you can't, you can't count. Two, two bicep yeah, two, tears. Two, oh, two bicep yeah, tears, yeah. fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, well, you know what? <laughs> Even more amazing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, like the thing about it is, is people are so easy to put him down, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just think that it's, it's because his sense of humor and he brushes people up the wrong way and they don't understand his sense of humor. And he's, uh, Nathan is uh, just like me. He's, he's mommy. Either you love it or you hate it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's simple, isn't it? Listen, you got to be yourself and true to yourself. And, and you know, I always say to people, be true to yourself and you will attract the right people around you. Mm. Not the fake people, the real people. You know what I mean? Because you're being real to yourself. And, to, you know, to say, like, you know, he came back from two ruptures, like you fucking said. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But, Put, put me straight there, you know what I mean? Mm. You, you fucking looked amazing, and Nathan always comes spot on with condition, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like I said, I'll hopefully get to see him at the Olympia, and mm. I do think he should have uh, beaten Regan, uh, you know what I mean? Mm. No question about it. Don't get me wrong, uh, Regan looked amazing. He's got a nice, beautiful physique, but you know, Re- Regan is that... Uh, He's not quite there yet. He's, he, Regan is where Samson used to be a few years back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he hasn't like, you know, gone to, he, he hasn't gone to that level where he where we want to see him. Everybody's waiting for that. You do know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And we're holding our, we're holding our breath to see see that. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Can you can you imagine like in a couple of years physiques like Samson, uh, Andrew Jacks? Fucking Regan Grimes, you know what I mean? Them beautiful physiques in the top three, mm. fucking hell, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so who's your favourite physiques, physique or physiques in the pro league right now? Like I said to you, I haven't got a favourite physique, you know what I mean? I've got like you know f- f- physiques that you know I like, and you know, I like certain people's uh, the way of thinking, the mindset, and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I love Samson's physique, so you know, as you know that, you know, I love Andrew Jack's physique, so, you know, I love I love uh, Regan's physique, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I like them tall, uh, big aesthetic looking guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and also, I do like the freaky guys as well, you know? Mm-hmm. Do you know, like, there, there's, I, not, I, there's not that many really, if you look at it, I was thinking about this the other day, there's not that many really freaky guys like we had Marcus no, Rule, we had Ronnie in the nineties, people like yourself, yeah. do you know what I mean? But nowadays yeah. I think really only Nick Walker's popping into no. my head. Yeah, Nick Walker is a freak, you know what I mean? And uh, also he's a freak as well. Uh, what is he, man? The guy with the huge fucking arms and and heads like a little alien. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, Who? Crizzo. Crizzo, oh, yeah. Oh Crizzo, but, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I like Crizzo. Yeah, he's cool. He's cool. <laughs> like his, his head is just that small, isn't it? You know, mm. it, it reminds me of that. Do you remember that movie? Uh, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, do, do you remember the? Do you remember that movie? What's it called now? It's an old one. Uh, Not Men in Black. Uh, no. Uh, was it Was it Men in Black or was it Mario <laughs> Brothers? When they When they took When When they took their helmet off and it was that little head there. <laughs> Mario Brothers. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it's like it's movie. It's like they had them big bodies. Yeah, and yeah. And then when they, when they took the helmet out, it was like a little head. Yeah, you well, know what I mean? what makes the arms look bigger, mate? Oh, yeah, exactly. It's an illusion. He's a, he, he's a, he's a freaky-looking guy. You can't you know, deny that, yeah. Mm. Like you said, there's not many freaks uh, in the uh, open class, you know what I mean? Actually, there's more freaks in the 212, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like some, some really freaky-looking guys for how much size they've got on their body frame, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, yeah, uh, Nathan did amazing. I'd like to see him uh, at the Olympia this year. It'd be good to see him. Me too. And see where, where he can come, you know mm. what I mean? How do you, how do you think he uh, will do? Because I've, I've, I've got a... If he can get there, I've got a pretty good idea of where I think he will place. Where do you think? So, like I said to you, he can be anywhere in the in the top five. You know what I'm saying? Wow, top yeah, five. Yeah, like I can put him up on. Like I said to you, the thing about it is, with Nathan, it always comes down to what's it. It's 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 about it's like you know when you're going into Olympia, you see who. Uh, the, the you know uh, the the pro league is promoting. 
So right. you know who's gonna you know who's gonna be up there straight away. The type of people they always talking about posting and bringing up on their shows. You know what? Yeah. You, you know, you know that's the thing. It's like, you know, you got Samson. He's gonna be a favorite up there. You know, yeah. you've got uh, Derek. So they, uh, the way things are looking, I'll tell you straight, they're wanting Derek to be next in line and they're hoping and just crossing their fingers, he, he brings everything. Do you think he'd be Joe Weider's favourite? Would he be Joe Weider's favourite? Yeah. It depends if he can sit on Joe Weider's knee and <laughs> and if he takes and if he takes his lateral off. <laughs> Americans aren't going to understand that. It's a, it's a chocolate. Oh. Yeah, it's a British thing. Yeah. I, don't know what you're about. I I don't I don't think the I don't think the American people will understand that one. But yeah. if you look at the advert on YouTube, just look at the Rolo advert. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, all, it all matters on that, isn't it? Like you know, if he if he could if he's got a little booster chair for him to sit on his lap, he'll be oh. fine. <laughs> So, I mean, so, I mean, the thing is, you got I mean, okay. I want to, I want to pin you down now. I want to get you on your kind of Olympia predictions. I really want to hear how you think it's going to shake out. Uh, how it, how I think it's going to shape out. Yeah, uh, and how? Oh, okay, maybe uh, how with how you'd like it to. Give yeah, how I like it to shape out would be obviously something to win it. Okay. I would love something to win it. You know, it'd be good for him. Why? Because end of the day, end of the day, he's older than the, all the rest of the guys, and and he's made the most improvement. Yeah. And and you know, I can see him, I can see him winning it. You you know, if everything is right, I can see him winning it. No doubt. He's like he's got a lot of. Uh, he's got a lot of going for his physique. You know, people talk about his back and back. Yeah, listen, back. How many poses are you going to see his back on? Uh, or front, or rear double biceps. You're going to see his that pose on that. He's got a nice lat spread. Yeah. So he can come. He can compare to everybody in that. He's got good glute hamstring tying. Maybe because he's darker skin, you weren't able to see his glutes as a, uh, what's in a feathered uh, compared to the lighter skin guys. I've, you know. I, sorry to interrupt, but I've heard that Milos might be bringing him in around about 290 because he was 294 at the Olympia last year and 297.4 or something at the Arnold. And I think they're going to try and get him nice and crispy at 290. I think I think if that happens, then, you know, because his waist is nice and small. And plus, I mean, I, I, I've got to be honest, I, I, I kind of want to see a tall Mr. Olympia again. I do. I'm sorry. Yeah, I yeah, do. I mean, yeah. That's just my own personal preference. Yeah. Like I said to you, I want to see an open guy who looks like an open guy to miss, be Mr. Olympia, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, like, a, would, 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 uh, would like to see a Mr. Olympia back up 5'10 again, you know what I mean, and above. Zach, that's very but, shortest. Uh, yeah, I am very shortest. Uh, look up to me when you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, okay, then, so carry on with the names and who do you think is going to... Yeah, so, listen, I love Samson to win it yeah i would i would love to see uh what's it now andrew jacks up there you know what i mean how high though would, how high give me a number oh uh, well like, like i say if we're if we're doing <laughs> if we're down. doing if we're doing fantasy bodybuilding yeah yeah then i would like to see all the taller guys up there you know okay well yeah so i like to see all the taller guys up there i like to see uh what's it I would like to see Samson. I like to see Andrew Jacks. I like to see Regan. I like to see Crizzo. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I like to see them type of physiques in the first lineup. I, I, would you prefer instead of? I actually suggested this, and it got shot down in flames. Would you prefer instead of open and two twelve height classes like? Yeah, I would love to see high class. I think I'm picking up fun. on that. I'm picking up on that. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I would, I would, uh, I would definitely love to see high classes because it makes more sense. Okay. Then, then it comes down to like there is no weight gap. It's like what your physique's gonna look like. You, you know, you don't have to meet that a criteria of a weight and putting athletes down to a certain weight in the two twelve and and making them suffer because you know yourself. Eh, it's always the last couple of weeks what are most detrimental to uh, a bodybuilder's health, mm. and and that's where you know the body. It suffers the most 
in the last couple of weeks due to the the exploitation of taking you know hard you know diuretics you know stuff like that and a lot of orals toxic orals what they take mm. like halo testing you know oxys and stuff like that on your liver and stuff and and you know stuff like that is and obviously you're sucking your body down mm. to a certain thing you know it's like it's, yeah so that's the that's the problem you've got is like i would love to see yeah uh, like like nava having high classes yeah it would it would make a lot more sense because you're seeing a lot of uh, shorter guys entering the open classes now. You know, yeah, yeah. if you if you if you really think about it, the top two guys uh, uh, or top three guys last year were all sh- all short guys. Yeah. It was like, uh, well, how tall were they? All uh, four foot two? What, four, no, four foot three. Uh, four, four, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> now, well, Derek, Derek and Hadley, obviously, I mean, Derek was the. Uh, the, the 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 reigning you know two twelve Olympia champion coming in on the special invite for the Open, you got Hadi that started off in the two twelve in twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen yeah. he switched, you know so I mean Bonak was the next two twelve. Yeah, yeah. The thing about it is, like I said to you, it's like this. Listen, we're not stupid. Bodybuilding is a business. It's always been a business. The person who's going to win is going to be the one who's best for the business. Hang on, hang on. Well, how do you account for Hadi? Guy doesn't speak English, lives in Iran. Well, well, how do I not? How do I account for Hadi? Yeah, because you've got to you got to remember what his following is in like in the Middle East. It's crazy. I, I don't know about that. I think they might. I think if they if they really wanted, really? I think if they really? wanted, I think if they wanted somebody marketable, they'd have given it to Derek or or Nick. No, no, they couldn't have given it to Derek because Hadi was too ahead of him. Well, and yeah. The so they, so they gave it to the best man on the day. <laughs> no, they give it, they give it to the most marketable person on the day. And and um, in the Middle East, mm. Rami was the most marketable, and the second most marketable in the Middle East is Hadi. And he's got a lot of following just trying to write something bad on his uh, uh, picture or his page. <laughs> you remember? Yeah. You remember when Flex Lewis oh, uh, yeah. beat him? God. They came. They came hunting for him. Korea, I remember. I remember. I remember. Yeah, Flex was they, sending me the messages and telling me what, we, yeah, what they were it saying was, to him. It was horrible. Well, they, they put a fatwa out for him. You know what I mean? A what? So, a fatwa out for him. What's that? A death threat. Oh God! Oh, is that what it is? I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. What well, the gift to Salman Rushdie? You oh know my what God! I mean? <laughs> Just I think it's. It's not even his fault. It's the judges. Yeah, but you see, it's, it's and it's the same way yeah. the, how the Brazilian fans are crazy about the yeah. Brazilian bodybuilder. Yeah. You try to say anything bad about any Brazilian bodybuilder, mm-hmm. they're coming for you. They're hunting you down. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. They, they're gonna they're gonna get a fake booty girl to sit on your face. <laughs> oh, I best I, I best write something bad now. <laughs> hey, did you um? <clears throat> I I saw something on uh, online saying that a rumor that Flex because he's thirty nine now. Flex Lewis might be coming back as a Masters in the Masters Mr. Olympia. Pers- what's your feelings on that? I don't think Flex will ever come back. I don't. I don't. No, listen, what has he got to prove when he's won the 212 seven times? Yeah. And I don't think I don't think him coming back for the I don't think him coming back for the two uh, the, for the Masters will motivate him enough. And it's not much money, is it? No, don't get me wrong. If they put the money there, yeah. then definitely. But then right. you got then you got Phil and Kai and potentially others, you know. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Look at look look how big Kai is still at the moment. I know, I know. He's he's fucking huge. You know what I mean? He could he could compete anytime. Yeah. Who did actually? The question I'll ask you of all because I mean obviously you had all your years in America and and doing tours of Brazil and at the expos and the Olympias and. Who was who did you get on best with out of all the pros from all over the years? Because I've seen you, because you, you, everyone knows you. Yeah, no, I actually I, I got on with everyone, you know. Yeah. I got on with everyone. Chris, yeah, like Chris, I, Corm- I, Chris Cormier loves you. Yeah, yeah, Chris is a he's a top man. Jay's yeah. Jay's a top man. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. There's a there's a few pros out there, you know, who I've got the time and day for, and you know, and they've got the time and day for me. Just who you gel with, don't you? You know, mm. and who you can just have a laugh with. Yeah. You're like you know, I just get on with people with a personality. Yeah. You know. So we've never, not, is that why we've never got on? We we've never got on you because <laughs> you, you got you got personality of a 
watching a cricket match. What? <laughs> oh, lovely, thanks. <laughs> so, um, actually, I, 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 I don't want to. I don't actually, want... cricket can be exciting can uh, if you're if you're watching the twenty twenty. Okay, why? Meaning the 20 overs, it's a one day match, not the bloody test match. It was for five years long. Right, okay. You know, you get bored. I don't, I don't want to switch lanes to be a river downer, but you know, some of these deaths in bodybuilding, what is your feelings on that and how can it be best avoided? Well, what was my feeling on, listen, my, you know, end of the day, death is going to come to all of us, okay. whether, whether you like it or not. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying in that way, because death is is guaranteed. You, death is guaranteed for everybody. So it doesn't matter what sport you do, how safe you are, how meticulous you are. It all comes down to how well your body can handle certain things. I always give the people this perfect analogy is that people can smoke. They can drink, but if they pass away from smoking and drinking, oh my God, poor guy, you know. But as soon as a bodybuilder passes away from something, yeah. what he loves, and it's like, oh my God, he, he's a junkie, he's a drug addict, he's this, he's that. Mm. Don't get me wrong, you know. Most bodybuilders won't like to admit it. We have got a, we have got a addiction. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. The lifestyle is an addiction. You know, you feel like Superman when you're in that gym lifting up them stupid weights and throwing them about. It's an addiction knowing that, you know, you can look at yourself and put your body through that and how it can turn out. And, you know, you've got all these muscles on you. It's an addiction. The lifestyle is an addiction. Exactly the same way as, you know, the way people take cocaine, you know, how it makes them feel. Same way how drinking makes you feel, gives you that confidence, everything, you know. So everything, you've got to treat it as an addiction. Okay. And if pe it's just the way society is. It's the way it looks down on bodybuilding. It's like, really, you could be the most healthiest person. And only thing what's going to happen is you're only going to be the most healthiest person reaching the grave graveyard. Okay. Meaning that it doesn't matter how healthy you are going to be. When it's your time, it's your time. So I'm going to push you now. How, how can they, because I mean, for many, many years in, in bodybuilding, like between sort of 97 and so many years, we barely had a death. Now in the last five, six years, we've had, well, we've had too many. What's your feelings? Yeah, number one, it's down to, uh, in them days, we had magazines only. And we want that hands on bodybuilding now we have social media and people who are amateurs or people who are you know sorry to say like n n nobody's really like you know who who we wouldn't normally hear about yeah it's more heightened because okay. of social media who they are you know it could be a joe blogs as a bodybuilder it's like that uh episode uh, it's like that uh Oh my God! What was it? Now that kid who was training uh, in whatever country was it Bali or something? He was squatting and he broke his snapped his neck. Oh God! Did you see that? No. No, he was squatting. Yeah. And and it was and he, and he, and he had a spotter, but the but what happened was oh, the bar God. rolled over his neck and snapped it. Ah. You you actually saw Oh no no uh, uh, you, you actually saw the soul come out of his body. Oh jeez. You, you know when he when he made that noise, yeah. you know, like that. Oh, God. You saw, I, I the, hate stuff. Yeah, like that. you actually yeah, you actually saw the soul leave his body. Wow. It was it was the most horrible thing I've seen. But you do you know what I mean? In that way that you see normal people who are influencers now. And they heightened. It's like that guy who died. Uh, oh, oh my God, that guy, that influencer, who just passed away. Joey something aesthetics. Okay, yeah, 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 exactly. You, uh, so you know, you see a lot more of it, mm. a lot more of it, because we're on social media and bodybuilding is a, such a small community. Mm. Everybody hears about everybody. So somebody will say, "Oh, so and so bodybuilder died." You probably just done one show. 
but uh, but in the nineties you would never have heard of them bodybuilders. All of you you would have heard about right. is the pros, and that's it. Hmm. You would have never heard about no deaths about amateur bodybuilding hardly, unless you knew them and they were from UK and it was in the Beef magazine. Yeah. So, what would you, expanding on that, I suppose, what would you change about bodybuilding if you could, knowing, given how long you've been in the industry? What would you, what would you change about bodybuilding is mm. that I would change the fact that bodybuilding bodybuilders need to get away from that mentality where they feel the need to sh stay in shape all the time and and the need to impress their followers all the time the need the, the need to post pictures of themselves all the time your body can only change so much in a week mm. a month you know that that's the situation it's like all these bodybuilders have got these fans and they feel pressurized to give them it's like it's like likes are more addictive than crack and cocaine now it's like dude, everybody's chasing that likes likes oh i'm gonna post something oh my god i've got i've got i've got a thousand likes i've got five thousand likes i've got ten thousand likes zach do you know what i've seen a lot in the last couple of months it was coming a lot more common is people taking off the like thing you know where so it doesn't show the amount of likes i've thought seen a lot i've seen a lot of top athletes doing that and i i that was something i definitely noticed in the last couple of months why do you think that I've, is I've, I've not noticed that i have i'll tell you what it's a, honestly have a look you know it just says and sony and others a lot uh, have you yeah uh, yeah i, think, I think that's a good thing oh no i think it's a very good thing take mm. the lights off totally yeah and just just leave the comments on if you're going to leave something on you yeah. know i said i know you know i just think you listen I think the problem is a lot of people need that validation, and uh, you know you see uh, you see stuff sometimes the ridiculous stories like a, a girl took five thousand selfies and she couldn't get the right one god. and she killed herself. Oh my god! Yeah, stories like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you know, it just tells you like how many pictures are these people taking to get that perfect one? And you know, I'm seeing what I'm I seeing a lot more of is. A lot of bodybuilders are filtering their pictures. Yeah, well, we know the ones who do it as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I see. Yeah. I see a lot. Can't bring, can't bring lot. it to the okay. stage though, can you, mate? No, but the problem is, what they want is that wow factor for Instagram, and that's what they want. Hmm. And yeah, and, and the problem you've got then is, is like when you get on the stage and you don't look like that what you did. And then everybody's saying, why did it look so amazing two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and now they look so, like, you know, watery and, you know, overspilled and everything? Because they were never that good in the first place. I think you're better off making yourself look worse, and then when you get to the stage, you get everyone gets a pleasant surprise. Yeah, it was like, it's like, you know, it's like them days are gone where people used to be like Dorian and just turned up to the show and took off his... Oh, sort yeah. of pumping up and everything. Like, well, ha yeah. He wore a tracksuit to make himself look smaller. He said yeah. he had a tracksuit called the TARDIS and he wore it because it made him look small. And then when he unzipped it backstage, everyone just went, holy shit. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and that's what, uh, that's how it's meant to be. You're meant to look small in clothes. You know what I mean? Unless, unless you're big Rami or Marcus Rule. You've. Then, them guys were fucking crazy whether yeah. they were in clothes or without clothes <laughs> Marcus Rowe was just a beast didn't he in fact you've sparked, <laughs> you're talking about Chris's small head do you remember the, the hotel just after you won the 2009 British and I remember you walked down and I was like Zach what's happened to your head it's tiny <laughs> yeah <laughs> your head was really small I'd never seen it that small. It was just like, it just looked weird, man. Oh, weird. That's what you called Skull Head, isn't it? Then? Sc yeah, 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 yeah. You were good. That was yeah. good condition, well, that, man. That was good condition. Oh, my man. God. That's what you call Skull Head. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so like I said to you, that's the issue you've got is like uh, a lot of uh, social media. I always say to people, listen, take social media with a pinch of salt. Take people's lives with a pinch of salt. Take influences with a pinch of salt. Don't compare yourself to these influencers. You know, listen, half of these influencers are not even living in these nice uh, apartments in Dubai. I, I can tell you a lot of them are living in the shit part of Dubai. 
uh, and they share an apartment with four other influencers <laughs> and they're all fucking living together and they, you know they're all chipping mm -hmm. to hire a nice car out take all these pictures you know and they're all going around nice hotels and everything it's like how many times do you see girls posting pictures of themselves in hotels and them type of places but you never see them pay, uh, taking pictures in their own house because they've probably got a pile of dog shit that high was like a coffee table <laughs> yeah. you, you know yeah. you know the, that's the reality of it let's be serious is how many picture people are taking pictures in their own home you only see them when they are and about hmm. so you, yeah so, and go ahead so you're not moving to dubai then no, I, would, I would love to go to Dubai. It's, actually, you know what? Look, look, one thing about Dubai, what I'll tell you, is if you're successful mm. and you've got money and you want to wear nice things, go to Dubai because nobody's going to touch you. Nobody's going to look down at you. Nobody's going to bat an eyelid at you. You know, if you lose your phone, you lose your Rolex watch, somebody will hand it in for you because wow. that's the type of place it is. Really? There, there was somebody on... Uh, What's in one of these Instagram pages? He left his key on top of his Rolls Royce Phantom, uh, and he wanted to see if somebody's going to steal his car in Dubai. Wow! And and he left it all day there. He came back uh, in the evening about eight or nine o'clock at night, and it was still there. Maybe the key was too hot. <laughs> or, or maybe they couldn't reach it; it was too high up. Yeah, on the but roof. too too short. Yeah, but but that's but that's the thing, Jazz. It's like you know we live in this country now, eh? You tell me something. Would you feel comfortable, you know, in your fifties or sixties, eh, walking around the city centre with these young kids, like what they like nowadays? You know, mm. it's like you wouldn't feel comfortable in this country the way you see what societies are like and what these young peoples are like. They've got no respect for their elders at all. Do you do you just give them a slap? Oh, I would love to give him more than a slap. I'll give him the cane, you know, <laughs> to get him that back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the thing. It's like, we've, in this country, we've allowed people to do what they want because we're scared. It's like, you tell me now, eh, if you was in trouble and you phoned the police, no offense, but if a five foot two woman come, you know, on that call, what is she going to do? I don't know. May, may, make a TikTok video for you? <laughs> or probably TikTok. just... Or, or probably pull out a truncheon and say, do you want pegging? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I could just Google pegging, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, nobody respects the police no more because look at the state of the police. They look like... They look like teenagers. I, I did see one actually where um, a, a, a video of a policeman, he threw down some, some bread bread uh, crusts and this guy came out and, and ripped into him. And I swear to God, this kid looked about 17. He was a police officer. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like when you look at these kids, it's like who's, going to, who's taking these people serious? These police officers. Do you remember before there used to be a time when you had to be six foot? You had to be masculine. You know, you, you had to look the part. Hmm. for a certain job yes. that's why you was in that job now you can be you can have purple hair and and quack like a duck or fucking snort like a pig and you can be a police officer hmm. and and because there's because they're too scared to say no hmm. because of the backlash they get I, because they will get cancelled i don't, you know, I don't canceled... like seeing them all dancing at festivals and stuff and trying to be you know i i, I disagree with all that i disagree with all that the police should be there <laughs> with a presence do you know what i mean yeah listen if if the if there's certain thing you know you're in a certain country live by the law of the land hmm. simple if you don't want to live by the law of the land of that country then there's a simple option Bye bye. Hit the road, Jack. You ain't coming back no more. No more. <laughs> no more. No more. Why? Why did you never think about moving to America? Why was that never an option for you during you? You know. No, I I liked America at the time. Uh, I, I didn't want to move because of my family. You know, my right. dad was quite old, mm. old when he was alive, and you know, I wanted to spend more time with my dad. 
uh, while you know I had the chance to, which I'm glad I did, you know. And also looking at America now, my God, who wants to move there <laughs> with with the open borders with uh, Biden? My God, it's like he's ruining the bloody country. I did. I saw a live thing today where he because Biden went to Israel. And he was sat there with the Israeli president. And if you haven't seen it, go see it. And it really is because it was live. They couldn't edit it. And I swear to God, it was it was it was um, it was. Uh, how, what's the word I'm looking for? Zach, can you help me out here. Come on. Well, uh, two warmongers. <laughs> well, it was it was it was it was pretty awkward for a president of a, you know, a leader of the free world and everything. It was quite uh, it was quite um, quite 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 something to watch that mate. Well, in what way do you mean intense? He, he was just mumbling. He was mumbling, and he was and he was talking about um, the, the attack on the hospital, saying calling them the other team, and you see the face of the Israeli president going, "Oh God, like that." And it was, and he just he was stopping and starting sentences, and it was couldn't hear you what know, he was saying. You, you know the thing is, um, what makes me laugh the most is when they were all taking piss out of Trump and they hated Trump and they said, oh, when Trump comes into power, he's going gonna, he's gonna to be World War Three. None of that happened. Mm -hmm. Because you know why? You know, as much as I don't agree with some of the stuff what Trump does and says, he, he, he's basically a leader and he, and he says what he's going to do and he sticks to it. And he's like that, he's like that strict parent what Americans need. You know, the spoiled American kids, you know, they need somebody strict like him to put them in their places. And that is what's needed in this world. You need more strict leaders to say how it is mm -hmm. and not mumble about and basically be worried about who they offend. Mm -hmm. End of the day, people got to live a certain way. If they're not, not going to live in harmony with one another, and they got a problem with one another. You know, there's the type of people we don't want. It's simple as that. It's simple. Because the problem you've got, you've got certain cells of people and groups who love to cause shit. Mm. And and then and that's where, you know, they rally up the hay and and and, and the government allows that to happen. Mm. That's that's the problem. Serious question. Um, Evan centerpani has gone into politics. Have you ever considered that? Now, that's not a joke question. That's a serious question. Like, no, like Sheffield Mayor. I could see you as Sheffield <laughs> Mayor at least, mate. Yeah. The problem is, Giles, for you to be a politics, you have to sell your soul to the devil. And I'm not willing to do that. And also, I, can, I can't mumble around and jump around answers because if somebody asks me something... I've got to give them the honest answer. Mm. It's simple as that. And for somebody to be a politician, they love to, you know, cut the corners and not answer the questions. And they answer the question with a question and everything. That's the problem you've got. Every politician who's got in power, they've said one thing and they've done another thing. Labour, Conservatives, they're both the same now. Who do you trust? It's like, who, who, who do you trust in both of these parties? What have they actually done for us? Mm. That's why you've got to ask yourself, when you are voting, you're voting for people who are going to make a difference, and they all promise you everything, but what do they end up doing? Nothing. So if you look at history itself, why are you going to bother vo voting for any of these people? If voting made a difference, do you really think they would allow us to vote? Mm. Really, if those people had the power to change things, would they allow us to vote, to make the changes? Look what they've done with Brexit. They've ruined this country. Ruined it? You think they've ruined it? Yeah. It's like before we could go to Europe with the same passport. Now we have to have a different passport. Basically, what they've just done is they've, we were an island, and now we're definitely an island was isolated from everybody from the rest of Europe. Hmm. So basically, we just—it's like they just shot themselves in the foot for it. Yeah, it's like how has it helped anybody? Basically, shopping's gone, shopping and fuel is gone out of this roof. You know, what I mean, the prices of it. You, you like somebody were comparing uh, shopping 
what you could buy for forty pound, you know, uh, twenty years ago compared to now. You can't even you can barely fill up one carrier bag. And yeah. in them, yeah, you're right, you're right. And, that's true. That's true. And, and twenty years ago, you would have four shopping bags. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and that's and that's the problem. It's like everybody, you know, goes into politics and wanting to do the right thing, or it's like everybody wants to be a doctor to do the right thing to heal the right people. But once they get into that profession and they realize they can only do so much, their hands are tied, you know, then your eyes open up and you see the world for what it is. The robe comes off and everything is there in front of you to see. You, everything's there for in front of you to see because it's in open sight now. It's like, end of the day, you can see for yourself is like what's happening with young kids now. You know, they want to normalize pedophilia. They, they're taking young kids' innocence away. You know, it's like, leave the kids alone. Let the kids be kids. Let the kids do what they want to do. Once they figure out what a willy does, they'll know what to do with it. We don't need to tell them what to do. Nobody told me what to do with mine. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know how to stick it in a Rubik's Cube and play around with it. But it felt good. <laughs> Are you, Zach, are you still doing the work with the um, the kids and stuff? You remember you say you're doing the when you came in here last last year, was it last year? Last year? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 What's it now? No, no, I, I don't do as much with the kids, but I do still go back and you know mm. uh, do do one motivational talking for them and stuff like that. Good. But the problem you've got now is that I can't really do too much talking in school because I got to watch me p's and q's. Yeah. And my fuck and my fuck you's. You know what I mean? Yeah, how, That's uh, the problem. Do you, know, do you know, Zach? I think this is probably the least you've ever sworn ever on Global. Really? Yeah, you've so, you've really really curbed the swearing now, mate. Is I, I don't know your mum in the next room or something or? Uh, uh, I, I, I've got a dog biting my foot every time I swear. Uh, how are the dogs, <laughs> mate? How, how many you got now? Three. Yeah, yeah, three dogs. Yeah, so, yeah. They are so, right? no, but the problem is what you've got is it's like in schools you're only allowed to say certain things now. You're only allowed to talk about certain things. Mm. You can't talk about, you know, because the the council culture will get you. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can't be, you can't motivate kids the way you, in fact, you know, when I used to talk to kids and I used to say to them, listen, you need to go to the fucking gym. Listen, I swore now because you said I haven't swore. So I'm going to make up for the swearing now. <laughs> yeah, come on, wrap it up, wrap it up. <laughs> it's your fucking, it's your fucking fault. Beep, you know, beep, right? beep, beep, the beep, the beep machines. No, it gets melting right now. <laughs> yeah, so the thing about it is saying to a kid, a boy, you need to be masculine. You need to go to the gym. You need to learn how to cook. You need to learn how to do gardening. You need to learn how to do DIY. You know, these type of stuff. You, they don't want to hear it. The teachers don't want to hear that. All you've got to tell them is like, oh, don't don't go to the gym. Don't be violent. If you've got a problem, talk to us. We will sort it out. So basically, that kid can get bullied there and basically to the point where he's suicidal and he... he he, he tells the teacher or something what the problem is. By that time, the teachers do F all about it. And that poor kid is basically being traumatized and he thinks nobody cares about him. And you know what happens to them type of kids? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We know the statistics. Mm. That's the problem. We need to teach kids there. Listen, it's... It's no... It's be proud to be a boy. Be proud to be masculine. A girl... Be proud to be feminine. Be proud of your innocence. You know, mm -hmm. these are the things we need to teach kids. Mm -hmm. But it's not been taught anymore. As a kid, were you ever bullied? Yeah. Were you? Really? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. saw you at 19, mate. You, I wouldn't have bullied you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> maybe, for the, maybe for the ponytail, maybe. <laughs> uh, no, we're talking. Re we're talking really young here. Right, you know? okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I think everybody's got to that point where they got bullied, and like I said to you, it's like yeah, I was getting bullied by this kid, and one day, like you know, I come home, I thought I'm going to tell my dad. My dad's going to say a simple first take about it. My dad goes, "What are you telling me for?" I went, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Don't come home crying. Sort it out." Did he? So, so, so. I got this anger built up in me and that kid came up to me and he pushed my buttons, you know what I mean? 
and oh, I liked him. I liked him. Did you? And I, yeah, the teacher, uh, teacher came home to my dad and uh, told him that your son's been fighting. And, and, uh, and my dad explained to the teacher, listen, he's been bullied for, for so, so many times and nobody's paid attention. Have you looked at his? Have you looked at his face with bruises on it? Do you think you know? Did you ever occur to ask him, "Is your parents doing this? Who's doing this?" Mm. Nobody asked him this, you know. Yeah. So, so the teacher goes, "No, no, he was it now? You know what teachers are like. This is unacceptable, and this and that." And my dad goes, "Don't worry, I'll sort it out." As soon as the teacher went out the door, my dad goes. Well done. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. And nice and one. and that's what and that's the way, you know. People need to uh, teach their kids to uh, self defense. You know. Yeah. Basically, protect themselves. That... Listen, going to doing boxing or going to the gym, doing anything, and uh, you know, telling kids to do that at early years. Nothing wrong with that. These Karens and people will say there's something wrong with that. Oh, he's teaching his kids to be aggressive and stuff. No, it teaches... it's teaching your kids to protect yourself. And it teaches discipline. Of course, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, which is, it, it, they think they, they, mis, they miscategorize it. They think it's about being aggressive and dominant. And actually, it's actually about being disciplined and having and con also, confidence and confidence as well. Yeah. But you can also, defend yourself. Like, you know, yeah, also, yeah, don't get me wrong. If, if I was the bully and, uh, and and I was doing the bully and, and my dad found out that, he would slap me. Yeah. Because, because that's not the way he's brought me up. He's brought me up to protect myself. Mm. And that's the reason why you're doing what you're doing. No, not going around and, you know, bullying people for that reason. Mm. You used to box, didn't you? Uh, you used to box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, like I said to you, you know, listen, this used to, at a young age, you watch the Rocky movies and you, you lay your bloody mattress against the wall and start punching it about and do, and do shit like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what you do when you when you haven't got the money to buy a boxing bag and stuff. You know, all all kids do the same thing. You know, them days are gone where kids were kids, and you know you would go out uh, in the morning and go apple scrumping, and you know, for end up you don't know where you end up, and you end up doing just crazy things. You know. Mm -hmm. Just being an adventure like kids nowadays don't do that because they're all on computer, social oh. media, and they don't go out. Zach, Zach, yeah. Zach, don't get me started on young kids having phones, iPhones. <laughs> like I, I, I honestly think I think any kid under sixteen doesn't need an iPhone. There you go, said it. All they need is a basic Nokia, basic Nokia with no internet on it, <laughs> yeah. just to text, just to text the mum and dad. Yes, I'm okay. And play Snake. Yeah, please. Yeah, play with the right snake, though. You know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, play, with, play with the right snake. Right, yeah. Zach. Um, I just want to think. Anything else I want to cover? Anything else I want to cover? <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Do we just bring it back to bodybuilding, or should we just leave it there? Any final words, Zach? Anything uh, you want to talk about? Any any particular subject? Anything that's grinding your gears at the moment? Oh, everything grinds my gears, you know. Come on, number That's one, number thing. one, number one right now. So, sorry? The number one right now, if I was to push you. Oh, my God. I, I think I think what grinds my gears at the moment is... Bad, uh, in, bad internet? It's, 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 the, it's the way training has evolved, you know, mm. into the way that people are using handles for everything yeah, yeah like, just yeah, talking about that like, i was just talking it's, about it's like me. it's like everybody's using handles and doing these stupid fucking pulleys and fucking like the, the, the pulling round and the, it's like the, zach, it's zach, like, zach, oh, zach, oh. zach 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 oh, not, not pointing fingers oh. mate not pointing fingers no no she tried hey, hey zach zach she was squatting two plates for eight reps right down two oh, places wow. two two twenty five hundred kilo i mean like literally oh, Double what I was. You need to you need to film it and tag me in it so I can post it and show my followers that yeah, well, squats, well, yeah. squats does help build a booty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, that's and, the and thing. She, and, she was, and she was going right down and stopping at the at the proper parallel with every rep. She was handling it. 100 like, kilo, mate. Uh, yeah, I like it when they squat the full way. I can feel everything then. It's better. <laughs> We're talking about barbell squatting. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm talking about... <laughs> all right. Yeah, so like at the moment, the way training has evolved is like, listen, 
look at the physiques from the 90s, the way they were built and everything. Yeah. And it's like, you honestly think these handles are going to give you a better back. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Use every tool necessary for what you, you know, but don't overemphasize on certain things. Stick to lifting compound movements and stick to, um, you know, stick to the reps. Uh, you know, people, and some people are contracting way too long, you know, like overemphasizing everything. Mm -hmm. Just train. Don't, if you have to concentrate on every single part of the rep, like, and holding it, then you're not training. You're not, body's not doing it, you know? Normally, just go through the motion, squeeze, squeeze. You don't have to go, like you're having a shit halfway through the set. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're, squeeze, you're squeezing so fucking hard, a Ninja Turtle is popping out your fucking ass, you know? Like, well, that's, that's <laughs> puppy power, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely some fucking puppy power there, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> what did you start when I filmed you training last year? You would like you was it was discreet. One of your training parts going. Oh, Giles, he said this isn't just for the cameras. He does this every fucking day. <laughs> what are your training partners saying? Yeah. You go puppy power. I have the power. Doing he man and all sorts of weird shit. And I was like, oh god. And he went seriously, Giles. I, I swear to you, this is not for the cameras. For you, he does this all the time. This is what he's like. This is what it's like to train with him. You scream <laughs> right off in the gym. That was funny. That was funny. That was, that was good. Yeah. yeah. So like I said, it's like it's like training is so. It's so social media now. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. just so like fake. Everything's so fake. It's like half of the people who are putting content out there, who who are they influencing? Blind Bob? You know? Who's actually watching your video mm. and looking at it and saying, you know what? That's fucking motivated me mm. to train back today or legs today. That's the way you should do a video exactly. uh, blog. Zach, Zach, you and me, you know, when we were in the 90s, you know, watching, following bodybuilding, we had Ronnie and Dorian. You yeah, know, blood and guts, point. Ronnie Coleman, yeah. unbelievable. Do you yeah, need but, anything else other than that? Yeah, but what I'm saying to you, Giles, you can't bring them up no more because people are like, always get pissed off that we always bring up the old school bodybuilders. Let's not bring them up. Let's just let's just tell them, like, you know, now, let's not compare. But all, all you need to say to somebody is when you're doing a training vlog, Ask yourself, after watching it, wow, I'm proud of that workout. Mm. Half of you ain't fucking proud of that. If you're fucking proud of that, fuck me. Come, come and see me and I'll fucking show you a workout. <laughs> it's so fucking simple. Oh, so fucking simple. These, these vlogs you're doing now, how can people find those, Zach? Well, just go, just go on the Chemical Warfare uh, YouTube channel. You'll see them on there. I train different people. I train girls train guys, put them through their workouts as well. Just the training vlogs are not just about me. Mm. It's about like, you know, the whole team uh, with chemical warfare and stuff like that. So it breaks it up a bit. You don't have to see my ugly face every time training. Are, are, you, you, know? are you enjoying that? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Like I said to you, you know, like I always say, uh, you know, in life, eh, when you got something, you got a gift. And, you know, if you can't pass that gift on to other people, then it's a waste. Mm. You know, you pass it on to somebody else, see what they can do it. Mm. And if they appreciate that, you know, gift, they'll pass it on to someone else. It's like that movie, you know, pay it forward. Yeah. And it's true. It's true in life. You know, you have to pay things forward and never look at what you're going to get in return for it. But the problem is nowadays, everybody's all about what they can get out of someone. And if they can't get out of something, out of someone, they basically move on. You know, it starts mm -hmm. simple. You know, it's all about when they got no use for you, they move on. And this is the society we live in because they feel like they're, they're over entitled. You know, mm. the, that's the problem. Is you've got too many over entitled people where people in this industry think they deserve more than what they've got. Yeah. And this is why. The industry is in a in a situation where it's you don't know who real athletes are and you don't know who the wannabe athletes are because the wannabe athletes are ones who are putting content out there who have got more followers and are giving people f fucking shit advice. Mm. But but the way but the way to counteract that, I always say to people, don't be bitter about it. You know, just just uh, what's it now? If you 
uh, put out the information out there, you will get certain people following you. The more and more old school information uh, people put out there, it's gonna it, people are gonna listen to it. It's 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 coming full circle again. People are getting people are getting fed up with all this bullshit now. They just want something what's simple, what works yeah. and easy as that. Listen, we all try different workouts. We all try different diets. You know, every people want to try cocoa pops and all this shit. When it comes down to it, listen, just stick to the basics and it's going to work. i tell you something I'd like to ask you. I don't know whether you've seen what Eddie Abu's been up to on TikTok and Instagram in the last year. He's kind of, he's exploded on social media and he's, have you seen his videos? No, no, no. Oh, you haven't? No. He's gone like no. to another level of like fame now, to a different level. And he's he's marketing and he's pushing like eat whole foods, don't eat processed food, don't eat this, don't eat that. And he's kind of he's he's got like a, a really big international follow. I've got friends not involved in the bodybuilding industry ringing me saying, "Oh, I've started following that the advice of Eddie Abu with diet and yeah, like, but, really but interesting." You know the problem you've got, Jeff. But the problem you've got, Giles, is stuff like that. It's gonna put a lot of people off. Off if, what? You know, sorry. Off what? It's, it's going to put that type of thinking is going to put a lot of people off meaning it's not feasible for them to follow that type of diet a whole food diet to being that strict yeah do you know, we live in we live in a time we live in a fast fast food society and what what we should be telling people is listen if you can't cook your own food this is what you can eat you know this is what to watch out for this not like everything's bad everything's bad everything's it's, bad I, I i think maybe i think maybe you need to check it out have a look at his instagram eddie abu and just just do me a favor and let me know afterwards what you think because like maybe yeah. i don't want you to prejudge until you've seen it because he really is building quite a quite no no a, no, like no you talk about influence this is proper influence is actually i think believe i do think it's no, helping no, no, people don't get me wrong don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with, you know, uh, preaching to people what is good food and what is healthy food and what is, you know, processed food. Because half of the people don't know that. You know, the, yeah. you know when I was in school eh, and I was teaching kids, I would take them to the supermarket and I would say to them, I want you to pick food what's just carbohydrates. I would say to them, go and pick food what's just protein. Mm. And you know, half of them didn't even fucking know. Wow. Yeah, they didn't know what proteins and fats and carbs were. They, they, all they just knew was drink Red Bull and drink monster drinks and uh, that gives you energy. I said, oh, what's going to... Uh, Go Eddie's gone after the monster drinks. He's gone after the... I mean, because when you said Cocoa Pops, I mean, he's gone on proper rants about... He says, this bullshit in the industry, eating Cocoa Pops after a workout and taking this shit and that shit and this is shit. And like, it really, he really, I mean, a lot of what, I, no, I, I don't agree with no, everything, like, but I, a lot of it, I think is absolutely fantastic. No, listen, listen, I do think, you know, I always said to people, food is medicine. Yes. That's, yeah. And yeah, and, and food can be your poison. Mm. That's what people don't realize. And, you know, knowing what problems you've got, we can counteract them problem with eating certain type of diets, yeah. certain type of food, staying away from certain type of stuff. Simple. Huh? Sugar, sugar is overconsumed. Ugh. You know, and you know they always demonize butter before. Nope. And they always they always demonize ghee. They always demonize the egg yolk. Yeah. You know they always demonize salt. You know, yeah. that's not the problem. The problem is sugar. Yeah. The problem is processed food. Like you say, cocoa pops, all this type of stuff, you know. But don't get me wrong. Uh, if you want to have a, a, a cocoa pop once in a while, yes, have it. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. But, uh, but the, the main thing to remember is, listen, you can't be having all this processed food and then say to yourself, I'm having all these vitamins and I'm healthy. No. That's why that's why I've got a problem sometimes when bodybuilders are always posting the junk meals and I'm like I, what the fuck I are you agree doing? I don't like that I when they say 10,000 calorie day and, and those video have you seen how many views those videos get it's yeah. like th tens of hundreds of thousands of views and you think don't be posting this shit you know and thing is now we've got all these companies popping up I mean no disrespect but there's companies popping up in the fitness industry for cheat meals it's not protein this or protein or lotion no, this or... It's freaking junk food. Yes. They're marketing junk food. 
Giles, I was on an expo. Um, what expo was it now? Fucking hell. I can't remember what expo is now. Arnold, body power, it, FIBO? <laughs> no, no, just this year. It was a small expo. And, FITEX, uh, FITEX. One of the ship. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I forgot what the. Yeah, it probably was FITEX, I think. Was it FITEX? Yeah, it might have been FITEX. So, so what happened is, yeah, the, the place here, what sold out of the food was a fucking donut place, oh. a cake place. But, but remember, protein donuts, protein cakes. Fuck sake. <laughs> you're not eat you're not eating that cake for fucking protein. Yeah. If, if you're saying that, look, I'll give you more protein if you drink my sausage. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, you'll be cons you'll be consuming a hundred grams of protein with a with a tinkle of fucking pineapple juice. Oh. <laughs> mm. You know? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. It's crazy. Like all these people. <laughs> all right. Oh, Zach. Don't you dare spit it out. I'm. Oh. I worked hard for that. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yeah. But the, it's the food industry is crazy. But you know what? Yeah. The people who are to blame are us bodybuilders because all of a sudden, oh look what I'm eating. I'm eating a fucking pie. <laughs> A what? I'm, I'm gonna say something else there, but okay. <laughs> I'm eating a massive fucking ten inch pizza. I'm eating fucking all these burgers. I'm eating all these fries. Oh, I'm eating all this, all that. Right? Mm. Like, yeah, but you, but none of the please film next day when you're on the shitter. Please film that for everybody to see what's happening to your guts then. Exactly. Mm. Nobody wants that. You know, you're, nobody wants to process Zach, after. Zach, you're one of the only bodybuilders I've ever spoke to that's actually even brought up the fact that you don't just take bodybuilding supplements, you take health supplements. Yeah. You, like, I couldn't believe, I think you were the first body, I mean, maybe there are other, of course there's other bodybuilders that probably do that, but you were the first one to actually say, right, I believe this is important and I want to talk about it. Yeah, it's like, like, you know, a lot of people you see, you know, they have... Their ankles swell up, you know, after bodybuilding competitions and stuff like that, you know, because of mm. circulation in the leg. I said to him, listen, fucking consume some horse chestnut. You know, it's the tablets, capsules. Yeah. And that helps uh, uh, the circulation in your veins, in your lower body. It helps the circulation in your legs. You know, if you, you know, if you've got a job where you stood up all the time, yeah. if you've got a job where you sat all the time, and, you know, then people, people end up to getting, you know, a lot of... Uh, you know what they call virus veins you know what i mean yeah, stuff yeah. like that yeah it helps with that it opens up them veins to help pump the blood around better to stop the swelling around your ankles a lot of people don't realize is after a show you know you are gonna get swelling you know mm. everywhere but not in the right place where you want it unfortunately you know <laughs> So, so, so this is what you have to a tablet for mitigate. That. This, <laughs> this, is, this is what you have to mitigate. It's like yeah. I always tell people: after they've done a show, I want you to fucking straight away, as soon as you're off the stage, not suck this. I want you to suck that bottle and drink two liters of fucking water. Mm -hmm. Get two liters of water down your straight fucking away before you have any meal. I won't tell you. What, what, I won't tell you what I've done after contest. Can you disapprove? What did you do? Well, I'm not going to say on camera. So, <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't water, put it that way. Um, so, uh, well, so what, hang on. So one thing I want to ask you, actually, there's something that's been really, really, really puzzling me at the moment. What food do you think it is that's causing all these lips girls to swell? Uh, it's, called, it's called sucky fucky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so because I see all these girls with like these big pumped up lips and I just wondered what, what food they're eating, you know? You know, you know, you know the crazy... You know the crazy thing about it is this girl comes up to me and she goes to me, uh, do you mind if I ask you? Oh, I don't want to kill it. I don't want to kill it. Uh, she goes, go, ask me, ask me what? Oh, no. She goes, uh, where did you get your lips done from? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wait. No. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, you what? Thanks. So where did you get your lips done from? They're beautiful. What the fuck are my lips done from? I was born with these bastards. <laughs> Fuck it up. When I was five years old, I just used to have these big lips and a little fucking head. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Fucking, see, see, you know, it's fucking crazy. Like, 
that, that's the thing is that like guys are getting them done now as well. No. Yeah. yeah. I, hang on, hang on. I saw you got your eyebrows done once. Well, I, I, I do get my eyebrows done. Well, do you, no, the, no, you did. Too, I remember it was the Leeds show. You, well, had, listen, you, had, you had them shaped. Listen, I remember. I was a bit like, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I, I've got a thing for eyebrows. The first thing I look at in a woman, apart from my ass, is her eyebrows. Oh, really? Why? See, see if they, you know, see if they got the nice curvature on it. Because I've got a thing for eyebrows. You know okay. what I mean? That's your thing. Uh, so, sorry. That's your thing. That's my thing and the batty. And the batty. <laughs> <laughs> the batty crease, the batty crease. I know. You, you know what I mean? Yes, you, you like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like I said to you, that's the thing. It's like, who is telling these girls that looks okay? Who is telling these girls don't train your ass? Just put, just put two liters of Jello in there oh. to shake that fucking trifle. It's Awful. Like, right. Your ass. The geometric shape of it doesn't doesn't correspond with your legs. Mm. It just shows that you didn't train that ass because your legs don't match it. How can you have your legs like stilts and then you've got this big fucking, you know what I mean, fucking, uh, what's it, a pumpkin on it? You know what I mean? <laughs> <A> pumpkin <laughs> on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but the problem is, you know what is it? It's like, these guys are to blame. These fucking pussy boys are to blame. He said it. He said the word. You said the word. I was waiting for you to say pussy boys. I'm very disappointed it's taken an hour and a half to get to this point. I've got to be honest. <laughs> There's certain so, so, things you want to hear from Zach. Catchphrases. Pussy boys. I don't know whether you, I don't. I've not heard you say bumper clap for many years now. Pussy clubs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turas, I said that a lot. Okay. Turas. Turas. Right. Yeah. Not heard yeah. That one. Not heard so that. yeah, so that's the that's new so one. that's the thing, Charles. It's like if you know these girls there, you know some of them like these feminists. They go, oh, we don't need your man. We can do everything without a man. Trust me, when you're on your my fans only, everything what you're getting done is from men. They're paying for it, mm. and if you know that's the problem you've got is uh, there are certain people who like to be abused and these are the type of people men what are simps and they like to be abused and that's why i will put them under the category of pussy boys pussy boys you know yeah, yeah they, they need to man the fuck up and realize that these women have got no respect for you only reason they're talking to you is because you're paying for it if she if you was in a club or a bar or somewhere she wouldn't look at you twice unfortunately so you need to build up your self-esteem instead of paying that fucking 899 uh what's it now for my fans only spend that money on a fucking gym membership spend that money save it open buy some weights for the fucking home mm. build up your self-confidence the, the problem is you know for you you don't feel confident in yourself you feel like you are not worthy and you feel like the only way you can get attention is you have to pay for it but that's not the right kind of attention my friends you know is that, is that what they call the, them is it incels they call them they call them what's that? they call them what's incels that? don't they these kind of these yeah these incels. very yeah, yeah. kind of uh, un yeah. unmasculine yeah. men i suppose yeah, yeah, it's like some of these men like pay these women eh, who are dominatrix and eh, to fucking beat them up and stuff like this. There was this one woman, she goes, she hasn't cleaned her house for 10 years. So basically she goes, I leave my house as a mess. And then one of these pussy boys come yeah. and she and she puts a dog collar around his neck eh, yeah. and he w w walks about uh, in the house with, on his hands and knees and he cool. and he cleans the house for her. Sounds good. And, and they pay her for that. That sounds good. Can, 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 can I can I book you for next Wednesday? Yeah, that's right. I, was, I was I was feeding it to him. I was feeding it. To him. <laughs> can, can I book you for next Wednesday? <laughs> Do you know what? Zach? I I think this conversation here tonight has been probably a good. I think a good sixty percent of the kind of what we talk about on the phone. Yeah, I, I think because yeah, obviously yeah. it's forty percent. We probably yeah, would get we I would think, get cancelled. I think the thing is there. Uh, you can only talk so much about bodybuilding, can't you? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, and and the thing about it is, don't get me wrong. I love the sport. I love, I love everything about bodybuilding. You know, obviously the pros and cons, and obviously you get some people on the internet always talking about the past and past. Listen, I'm not that type of person. Mm. Like I'll just say, listen, yeah, of course I miss the olden days, what they were like before social media, and social media has a uh, 
brought a good stuff for bodybuilding and it's brought a lot of people who are like-minded who can think the same to follow the same like-minded people so yeah. if you don't like a certain if you don't like a certain way or a certain thing you don't follow them people you follow you you follow certain people that's the thing you follow yeah. certain people and that's what people need to realize is nobody's putting a, a gun to your head and saying this is what you need to do. This is what you need to. This is who you need to follow. Somebody you, you don't like somebody's way of thinking. Simple. Don't follow them. That's why I don't understand people who get high rated and feel like they need to put abuse on somebody's page because they said this type of training technique is better than this type. Yeah, I, I, th you know, I think though, what with you in particular, I think even you know, all through your like heavily competing days you've always seemed to be someone that's had balance. And also I would say that I think anyone who like listens to you and, you know, and follows you on, on YouTube and social media and everything, it's like a, a bodybuilder doesn't purely define who you are. No, like I said to you, you know, like I always said to people, bodybuilding is a part, one part of you. And, and then you have some other aspects of your life as well. And that's why I think it's a bit of a shame when uh, people just see bodybuilders as bodybuilders yeah you know but they don't see other people like that yeah it's why why with bodybuilders they just see you as bodybuilders yeah. and and then you know they see something else different about you you pour something down oh wow i didn't know you thought like that but, he's got six, hang yeah. on, but that's why bodybuilders um i think that's where social media does play a part because I know I mean I won't mention his name there's a bodybuilder who's been competing every year for the last pro bodybuilder for the last god knows like 10 years and he's not competing this year and I've seen his engagement go right down and he's gone back to actually post he started posting stuff about his family and what he's up to and now he's gone back to posting from last year from two years ago just to kind of get that engagement back and I think that's really sad mate I really think that's sad yeah. because, because he's, he's looking at it and thinking my sponsors aren't going to be happy or this is not going to be happy my relevance is going down and I think sometimes when that's, they just that's, you know that's why <clears throat> I always say to people look at bodybuilding as a chapter of your life in, and then start getting to a point at that chapter where you know you might have to t uh, change the chapter and get prepared for that yeah. and start doing things what are gonna you you need to be thinking to yourself you know what if i'm not sponsored tomorrow is it gonna make a difference for me yeah for me fucking no way i can do what i want and i will carry on doing what i want you know it's like what i bring to the company you know what i mean mm. and uh, that's what that's what how i think but if you're a person who's thinking i need this sponsor and uh, there's nothing else I got. Then it's really sad, really, because that's not the way you should be thinking. You should be capitalizing. You should think to yourself, I've got a sponsorship. I'm getting this money for doing two or three posts a week. So you know what? Instead of being a lazy bastard, yep. I'm I'm going to start doing something else as well. Increase my income. Yep. So when it does come time for my sponsor to get rid of me, I've still got something else to fall back onto. No. Oh, your sponsor says to, uh, to you now, Oh yeah, we don't need you no more. Oh shit, what do I do now? Oh, I best get me fucking balls out and fucking post it on OnlyFans. <laughs> I've never seen you with like a Ferrari or there's times when you probably could have afforded a really flash car. And you were like, and I Listen said to you, me. I said to you once, and you were like, what the hell? I've got this, I've got a nice car, but I don't need like you know the you know the ones. Hang on, Zach, you know the ones that you know, back in the day, driving Ferraris, driving Porsches and all that, and then you see them ten years later and it's like, oh shit. Yeah, no, no, like I said to you, it's like I was around uh, wise people who were a, a lot rich, you know, who had a lot more money than me. Right. And uh, I saw the way they were, they were with the money. And I remember I had, uh, I've had a few nice cars anyway, and I had a, I had a convertible uh, BMW M, M Sport, you know what I mean, M3. Nice, nice. And, uh, and I've, had a, I've had a Porsche, I've had a Mercedes with my private regs on them and stuff. But you know what? Every time I used to park them up, I always had some cunt scratch them. Did you? Yeah. And, and, I, was, and I was always worried, like, in town when I parked them and stuff like yeah. that. And it's always, on your, it's always on your head. You're trying to find the perfect place to spot. And then, you know what? Yeah. I remember, eh? I, I, my, uh, what's it? Um, my friend, eh? He's a fucking multimillionaire. He's fucking got a swimming pool in his house. Inside his house. Not outside. Inside. <laughs> wow. okay. yeah, yeah. 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 Inside. Yeah. That. And, and, and you know what? You know how much he spends on his cars all the time? Oh, up to five grand. 
Oh wow! And he, yeah, he spends five grand and he, and he just parks them up, and you know yeah. what? And it's just to me, like, I don't spend no more than five grand. So then, within a few years back, I start doing the same thing. And so what happened was, I needed a run around at the time. Yeah. So, so I just, uh, I just bought a fucking a, shit, a shitty fucking uh, what was it at that time? The first car I bought. Uh, just like a Ford, just like a Ford Focus or something, just a run around. How the, yeah. how the hell yeah. did you fit in that? Trust me, it was just I fucking fit in it. I put the seat right to the back of my high tower. <laughs> high tower, police academy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice. yeah. I, so yeah, yeah, but you, but you know what? And I was driving it around and just fucking about. I didn't care how I drove it or shit, and popped up anywhere. And you know what? I felt so fucking good. I thought. I don't care what happens to this car. Fuck it, I'll get another one. Yeah. I'll get another one. I, I knew a guy who used to hang around with you many years ago in Newcastle, and he was, he was very well off. And he, because he, he had this fireplace business, he was like a millionaire. He was kind of semi retired. And he said that when he had his Porsche and he would turn up to clients doing like costs, cost ups or whatever, he said that during that time, he said the amount of people that didn't pay their bills, did, and then he went back to go it, driving his work van, he said it just never happened again. He never got bumped or people, you know, having to chase payments. He says, because people made an assumption. They're like, oh, he can afford it. I'll rip him off. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, the more money you show, and, and you know, the, the thing about it is, it's like, you get a lot of praise on you. People are praying on you. To you know, and they want to know you for the ro- uh, wrong reason. Yeah. When you're driving a shitty car about, and you know to yourself, like this guy, he's got a forty grand car, it's, it's on finance. He's paying five hundred pound a month on that fucker. Then everything else on top of it, and he's got a house. Eh? What he's what he doesn't fucking own, he's renting that out. You know what I mean? So. Who is actually in a better position when I've got my house paid off for? I don't owe anybody any debts. I'm living a good life. I can go on holiday when I want. You know what I mean? Mm. I can do. I can do what I want. I, I know that tomorrow, if I if I pass away, nobody's gonna say this fucker owes me some money and punches me in the casket. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and gives me a black eye. <laughs> yeah. You, you, yeah, you, yeah. Know, you know. You know what I mean? Just uh, there's, there's a perfect example there. Eh? Uh, you you see a guy who's a businessman and you know he lives in a fucking uh, ten bedroom house and he's got five cars he's got a yacht but he but he owes like five million you know what I mean in debt then you've got a then you've got a beggar on the street he's got no debt he's free and 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 he owes nobody money so who is actually richer possibly. You know what I mean? Yeah, who, I know what you're saying. Like, saying. You know, like like he he owes three million whatever, yeah, and he's and he's living his life knowing that he's he's chasing. He has to make them payments. He has to make them payment. Mm-hmm. And there's a fucker just begging, there and he's fucking thinking, oh, I've got two hundred quid today. That's good. I'm off. Let's go. That's enough for today. Bye bye. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll go to tech school, get my shopping. Uh, I'll go to the gym, stink it out, and and I'll go and I'll go I'll go to the massage parlor and I'll get a sucky fucky and a happy ending. And on that note, goodbye. And on that happy ending, <laughs> Zach, Zach, mate, we've been going for bloody nearly two hours, mate. Oh, oh, I think, oh, oh, oh my, hang on, hang on. I'm sorry, hour and a, hour and a quarter. No, that's the second gear, yeah, but hour, oh God, ages. Hour and 40. Mate, this has been fantastic. I just, I was waiting, to, I was trying to find the right, uh, got, a, got into a good rhythm there, mate. So it's, uh, yeah. It's yeah, I think, good, I think, I think in the beginning it kept on cutting out, innit? So, yeah, I'll edit that. Yeah. It's no problem. I'll edit that, mate. But um, yeah, yeah. Like I, like I said, just break it into segments, whatever. Fuck no, I don't know if anybody wants to hear my shit anyway. So, mate, you're very, mate. You've there's a lot of demand for you, mate. I'm always getting DMs and messages and comments saying bring Zach back and. Well, so. well, what you need to do is you need to get people to ask questions what they want to ask me. Yeah, and that'll be a good one. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll like, do that. Yeah, like it'll be good. What questions do people want answered? What questions do people want to ask me or ask us? Oh. So like do a like a do a Q and A style. Can we tempt you to come to the studio? Yeah, of course you can. Like I said, definitely. Nando's like, afterwards. After... Nando's, Nando's afterwards. Yeah, definitely Nando's after. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know my weak spot. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Nando's with you actually before. <clears throat> I think I, I, I ate more say... than you. I ate more than you. I can't believe it. 
you know, listen, I, I'm not a breast man no more. I'm a fireman now. <laughs> I'm moving on. I'm, I'm moving on to the side now. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, see that that's something that's something what I've evolved from. I have realized that yeah. it's not all about the boobies now and the chicken. Mm -hmm. It's about the family. It's more juicier. You know. It's definitely def uh, definitely juicier. Yeah. The thing about it is, it's like you know when you <laughs> you, know, you know when you've been eating chicken breast for fucking so many years. Mm -hmm. It's like two things I can't stand now. You know. It's fucking chicken breast mm. and fucking tuna. I can't eat them too thin. Oh, really? Well, Lauren, Lauren's got me eating chicken thighs, and they're quite nice, and they're really cheap. Oh, I, I love skinless, uh, you know, like all the fat taken off the chicken thighs. I will eat that all day long. Yeah, it's I'll really munch them. tender. I'll, I'll munch it. I'll... I'll, I'll munch of them chicken fight all day long. <laughs> right. Dak, I've got to let you go, mate. I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm sorry for keeping you so long, mate. But, mate, it's always, I love, I'll always love our chats, mate. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank no, you, def thank definitely, definitely, brother. Listen, so, like, you know what I mean? We just fucking waffle on, don't we, fuck's sake, you know? Zach, do you know, this is kind of, we could say this, if, and if you look at it, the 1998 Mansfield, when I first met you, when you had the LEG ponytail and the freaking huge <laughs> arms, still had free, massive, massive arms even then, when you were natty. I think I think this is actually might be our twenty five year anniversary, mate. So, oh, so we definitely we definitely need to do a podcast together in the studio. Yes, to celebrate our twenty five right. years of friendship. Uh, oh, and we need, we need a stripper pole in the middle of the table. Okay, and, and we and we'll get somebody to pole dance for us in a chicken outfit. In a chicken outfit, right? Okay, Lauren, you making yeah. notes. We Taking notes. Oh, yeah. Nando's, Nando's chicken. You Nando's, know what I mean? Right. Okay. I, right. I, I feel like chicken tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, um, oh. mate, thank you so much for coming MD Globe Muscle, mate. And I'm sure the viewers are going to love this. And uh, you, you, you can you can cut it up on that part where I say bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> all right, then, mate. Well, all the best, mate. And hopefully, we'll see you in the studio very, very soon. Okay. I think I just got time to have a one bank. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, mate. We'll definitely leave it there then. <laughs> <laughs>